in Chicago, but that's just another weekend in Chicago with the gun ban. Meanwhile, two police get killed, a citizen gets killed, and then the two reported shooters get killed. And before they even magically connected it to a Facebook that had Rand Paul, Breitbart, Alex Jones, uh, Ronald Reagan on it, they were already blaming me, and then magically, of course, it's all my fault. So I've been through this over and over again, but this isn't about Alex Jones. It, it signifies that the establishment is making their move on so many fronts to convert Homeland Security completely over from outside Al-Qaeda, who they publicly run, who they publicly have had kill over 300,000 Syrians, and who they publicly have been caught launching multiple chemical attacks on Syria and on civilians to then try to blame the Syrian government. And they got caught, NATO and Turkey, BBC even had to admit, launching those. And it's Cy Hirsch has reported on it, New Yorker magazine, confirmed, staged by NATO, and Obama is involved. The Obama administration is quarterbacking the funding and the weaponizing. So I want to ask this question of, of Media Matters and MSNBC and folks that work for the White House. I understand your leftist ideologues. It's all about power. I understand you know you're authoritarians and that you're basically psychologists that manipulate the public. I mean, I know you know who you are. But you really are signing on to some evil. We do have the CBS memo. The reporter had to quit and leave CBS. We're going to get her on the show in the near future uh, because it was so censored. But she got the memo. Um, and I wondered how CBS broke it. Well, she just did her job and it got through the cracks. Um, that they were staging Fast and Furious that killed thousands in Mexico, hundreds here, including seven at least, quote, law enforcement officers, most of them Border Patrol. That was done to blame the Second Amendment. Now, before that memo came out, we were saying, obviously, it's a false flag to blame the Second Amendment. And it came out, it was a false flag to blame the Second Amendment. And you can pull up the CBS memo. Just type it into the search engine that uh, the term, pull up the exact thing from memory. You type into the search engine, White House or Justice Department wanted to use Fast and Furious to restrict Second Amendment. And then you've got the memo right there. So if they've done false flags before, if they've done this before, and they have a history of it, and they get on TV and admit that they lie to us, and they laugh at us, and they say raising debt limits doesn't raise debt limits, and they say, if you have a business, you didn't build it, and your kids belong to the state, and Obamacare has lowered your premiums even though it's increased them on average. And you can keep your doctor. There it is, CBS News. Documents. ATF used Fast and Furious to make the case for gun regulations. And then you read the article, and they go on to admit that it was a setup to blame that. Fast and Furious to argue for controversial new rules about gun sales. Documents obtained by CBS News show that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives discuss using their covert operation to blame the Second Amendment. And then you can click through the article and see the documents in the timeline. Okay, so let's say there's a neighbor who's a convicted bank robber. You got a neighbor who's a convicted bank robber, and then there's a bank robbery a month after he moves in, and you see his description on the news that it's a 60, 60 or so old man with gray hair and a long beard. And you're looking out your back window at your neighbor who's just bought a new car and is eating a bunch of filet mignon in his backyard and he didn't have any money the week before and you're in a working class neighborhood. You're gonna start to think maybe my neighbor robbed the bank. He looks like he just came into a bunch of money. He fits the description and I know he's a convicted bank robber. So if you were started thinking maybe Bob's the guy that just robbed the bank, he doesn't have a job, but he just bought a new car. Are you a conspiracy theorist for thinking he may be a suspect? That's my issue. Now, I want to go through some of these clips, but MSNBC, the London Guardian, CNN, they're all playing this clip directly off White House run media matters. MSNBC quotes Alex Jones. And they take my clip, 
And again, I remember this on the show yesterday. You heard it. We're going to try to find in the three hours on the timeline where I said it. But I know right after I said this, it was during the first hour. If I had to say, I'd say 35 minutes, 36 minutes, 30, right around there in the show is where my memory thinks I said this. But I said this a couple times, so I'm not sure. I said, this is staged, ladies and gentlemen. My gut tells me it's staged, either by the sick general mind control of the love of death, torture porn, murder porn, shoot 'em up video game, death goth, Satanism, culture. Or it's been staged by a government that has a long history of staging false flags to blame the Second Amendment. And it's even in Operation Northwoods where the Pentagon wanted to stage mass shootings and blame it on their political enemies. But JFK said no. And that's ABC News. Look it up. Operation Northwoods, ABC News. 2001 declassified nine months before 9-11. It was in January of that year. So that's the issue here. This could be real. But you can believe they can go on planetinfowars.com message boards. Anybody could. People go create fake profiles of me on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, anti-Alex Jones campaigns where they send people mean letters in my name. Program the company fax machine. People get that number, program that, and send threats to the police department. And the cops call me and say, Alex, uh, you didn't send these death threats to us, did you? The detective, this is years ago. And I went, what death threats? Well, over a fax machine. Is this your fax number? Yeah. You didn't send these death threats? Well, no. Yeah, we figured that. It's easy to spoof that and reprogram it. I mean, all I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the victim of this. So who knows who these cutouts are? He's a multi-time ex-con. Perfect cutout, we don't know. And they'll take an informant, they'll tell them they're part of a drill, they'll set them up. I don't know if that's what happened here. But either it's part of the sick culture, the general ambient mind control of just evil, demon possession, whatever you want to call it. Evil is out there, evil lives. Or it was a staged event in Harry Reid's district with Harry Reid's controlled police. I mean, he's a mafia don in Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. His whole family just openly, almost his whole family, granddaughters, sons, you name it, get campaign money for weddings, don't get in trouble. They do things, let's not exaggerate, 10,000 10, times worse than what Dinesh D'Souza did. His thing was a technical deal for not calling it a pack when he got four friends to give money to his friend. Crooked toenail. Dinesh D'Souza facing 10 years in prison. Filmmaker, because he made him mad. He was on the show yesterday. I mean, they'll do anything. They're coming after people. He gives his sons all these big Senate contracts, Chinese energy deal contracts, and he's involved with Akern. Just, he's involved with Jack Abramoff. And let me tell you, he's a real gangster, folks. I'm going up against a real gangster. I need your prayers. I'm not saying I'm macho. I'm not saying I'm tough. But let me tell you, I'm doing something real here. This isn't a game. It's not a joke. This is the real deal, this broadcast. And, you know, most people couldn't handle the pressure. I'm not bragging, by the way. Saying, hey, man, I'm, I'm taking on a lot. I'm just saying, expect me to not have all the answers. Expect me to get things wrong. Expect me to be under stress and act like a jerk sometimes. And to stammer and, and cut off guests and people because I'm so real, ladies and gentlemen, I can't put on an act. I don't know how to. And I'm going up against totally evil people who we know have committed all these crimes before and who've been caught and we know their M.O. and they're militarizing the police. And, and now every time a car backfires, you know, they say it's a school shooting and shut down areas. And they're training us all to live as prisoners, as militarized police are deployed, and as all of America turns into something that resembles Boston in the aftermath of the Boston bombing. They have routine checkpoints now on highways where you pull up and the cops all aim M16s at you, even though you don't match the description, to just get you used to living in Fallujah. And in dozens and dozens of Army documents that are public, they say 
and the FBI says and the police say we are training for a war with the Tea Party and the veterans and the gun owners and I've said hundreds of times over and over and over and over again you've heard me here it's like saying prove the Atlantic Ocean exists it's right there and I need the listeners to go into all the files all the shows in the last few months where I've been saying they're gonna shoot cops and they're going to try to connect it to us and blame us. I need you to find those clips so we can play them here. Because we're too busy covering the now to dig all that out, even though I, I literally say it every day, every hour. We just need you, the listeners, to go to the Bundy Ranch coverage, go in there when I talk about false flags and what they're planning, and to, and to find those clips and put them on YouTube. We need your organic help to be able to do this as well. Because we're not at the Atlantic Ocean we're here in Austin, Texas, but many of you are on the Atlantic, to use the analogy. You're there watching the show each day. You know where those clips are. We need your help. We're so overwhelmed. It's like they've got a uh, batting cage machine shooting.